Uh, good morning, my YouTube viewers. Crystal here. Uh, what I wanted to do this morning is I wanted to give you um, a code review of the loan prediction competition on analytics vidhaya. And what I did was I went and took the random forest algorithm that I used on the Titanic and then I slotted it into the loan prediction competition to see how it worked out. And when I did that, I did everything I was supposed to do and then I submitted it to the analytics did higher website and I got a 76% accuracy, which I thought was pretty good considering the fact that I was using an algorithm that had been used for Titanic. And as a result of that, I wanted to go ahead and do a code review. And as you know, if you watch my video on the Titanic uh, Random Forest code review, I used another um, an algorithm that I got off of a website. It's called from, I think it was from Ahmed Bibi's, but you can go on my Titanic Random Forest code review and that will give you the website on that particular code review. I haven't really included that website here because I only use the algorithm for the Random Forest and nothing else. So what we'll do now is we'll proceed with the code review. The first thing I did was I imported the libraries. As you can see, I've imported all the libraries. And then I imported my training data set. And you can see I imported my training data set from the uh, Analytics Bidhaya website. And you can see I've got my uh, loan um loan prediction website here. That's the training file. Um, I uploaded the testing data set. So you can see the testing data set. The only difference between the testing data set and the training data set is the loan status is not on the testing data set because that's what we need to include when we do our uh, prediction. What I did was I made copies of the training set and the testing set because that's what Analytics Vidhaya wants us to do is to make copies. So if anything happens to the uh, er, to the train set and the test set, you can always go back and use the original sets. So I checked to see which columns were on the training set and the data set. And you notice the only difference is the loan status is not on the testing set. I checked the info on the training set. So you can see um, how many non-null characters there are and um, what type of files they are. I did exactly the same thing with the testing set. I checked the shape of the training set and the shape of the testing set. So the training set had 614 rows by 13 columns and the testing set had 367 rows by 12 columns. What we did was we said um, did a value counts on the training set and so there were 422 who got the loan and 192 who didn't get the loan. And we did the value counts on the percentages on the training set and 68.73 got a loan and 31.27 didn't get the loan. So we, we did a graph so you can see a, a, a a visual representation of who got loans and who didn't get loans. And then we plotted we plotted these graphs. So you can see like the gender of the people who got loans and did and the marital status of the people who got loans, the self-employed people and the credit history. 
we plotted another other graph so you could see people who got loans whether they had dependents what their level of education was and what property area they lived in we did a subplot for the applicants income and you can see that it was on the left hand side of the chart and then we did a box plot on the applicant's income as well. And according to the box plot, you can see that there were some outliers. And the outliers are over here. We did a box spot plot on the applicant income and the education. So it's the people who were graduates. Uh, generally had higher incomes than people who weren't graduates and then we did another we did another chart on the applicant the co-applicants income and you can see the co-applicants incomes and their salaries tended to be a lot lower uh, we did a, a box not a box plot but we did another plot on that so you can see the outlier outliers and you can see that there are right here there were a few outliers we did a box plot on the loan amount and you can see the average typical loans that people wanted and we did another type of plot to see the typical loans that people wanted but there were some outliers and the outliers are here So um, we did a um, bivariate plot on the gender versus the loan status, and you can see the bivariate plot. And we plotted some more graphs as well, Put some subplots. So the loan status on gender, the loan status on marital status, the loan status on dependents, the loan status on the education, loan status on self-employed, loan status on credit history, loan status on property area. And then we did some more um, we did some more charts where we distributed the data. So we did a chart on their applicant income, co-applicant income, credit history, loan amount, and long-term amount. So we got, we did another chart on loan status versus applicant income. We did some more bivariate charts on loan status versus segregated incomes where they had divided the incomes out into bins. Did another chart on loan status versus um, segregated income and they divided that out into bins as well. We did a chart versus loan combining the applicant and the low and the co-applicant income to see who all got loans and that was a bivariate analysis. And we did a heat map as well so you can see the heat map. So the loan amount had an effect on the loan status and the co-applicant income had an effect on the loan status. And the loan and the loan amount term also had an effect on the loan status. So what we wanted to do now is we wanted to check to see if there were any uh, null characters in the data set. And yes, there are no there are no there are null values in the data set. So what we did was we checked to see where the null values were and there are quite a few null values in the data set and the training set and we did exactly the same thing with the testing set and you can see that there are quite a few null values in the testing set. So what we had to do is we had to go through and replace all the null values with other values otherwise the program wouldn't work. So we had to replace gender with the mode. We had to replace married with the mode. We had to put replace dependents with the mode. We had to replace self-employed with the mode. We had to play, replace credit history with the mode.
And so uh, we checked the training set to see where, to see if there were any other non null characters. And we went into the training set and replaced no, loan amount term with the mode and loan amount with the median value. So we went through and we checked again. We checked the training site to see if there were any null characters and there's no more null characters. And we checked the test site to see if there are any null characters and there's no more null characters. So what we did was we did um, created a new column called loan amount log and that just took the loan amount and it converted it into a logarithm. So it would be easier to take the loan amounts and put them together in one spot. We combined the training file and the testing file and we dropped the loan status from the training file to make the training file and the testing file the same uh, number of rows, no, same number of columns. What we did was we took the plus sign out of the um, dependence column. And so what that did was that that made the number a numeric instead of an object. We assigned values to the gender. Male was one and female was one. So that assigned numbers to the uh, gender. We assigned um, numbers to the marital status. So no was zero and yes was one. So that made the marital status a numeric value instead of a string. We assigned numeric values to self-employed status. So that made self-employed status a numeric value instead of a string. Self-employed self was no and no, not self-employed was no, was zero and self-employed was one. We assigned a numeric value to their education. So a graduate was zero, no, a graduate was one and a non-graduate was zero. So that made that column a numeric value or a binary value really. We assigned numeric value to their location. So rural was zero, semi-urban was one, and urban was two. And so that made that column numeric instead of a string. What we did was we dropped the loan ID column because uh, this random forest will only work on numeric values. It won't work on strings. So we had to drop that column to make the random forest work. We assigned our variables to X and Y. And then we did a, a program called Get Dummies. And basically what that do, does is that takes care of the categorical values. And so that's something that you need to do just to prepare the, prepare the file to be predicted upon with the algorithms. We um, installed some more libraries from the Python library set. And we had um, an algorithm called compute score. So you can see how they computed the score. And then we had another algorithm called recover train set. So we recovered the train set in that aspect. So now you can see the DF train and you can see uh, gender is binary, married is binary, dependence is numeric, education is binary, self-employed is binary, applicant income is numeric, co-applicant income is numeric, loan amount is numeric, loan amount term is numeric, credit term is, well, numeric, binary, really. Property area is numeric and loan amount log is numeric. And so you can see that all of the columns in this file are numeric because that's random forests will not work on objects that will only work on numeric values. So um, 
I set up my random forest classifier. And then I did another another chart and you can see that the credit history was probably one of the most important factors when it comes to giving a loan. Next to that is the applicant income, loan amount, loan amount log, co-applicant income, property area, dependents, loan amount terms, marriage, gender, education, and self-employed. The next thing I do is I set up my model and you can see that we had to use the transform function and the transform function um, will not accept strings, it will not accept null values so you have to make sure that uh, there well the transform function won't accept any null values so you have to make sure that there's not any uh, null values in your data frame if there are any other any null values in the data frame the data frame the transform function just will stop and it won't work so that's why you have to prepare your data, because if you don't prepare your data adequately, the algorithms won't work. So we've got another, um, we did exactly the same thing to the test file that we did to the train file, and you've got your transform function. Now we've got our a logistic regression algorithm and this is the algorithm that is used to um, make the prediction and you notice that they had five rounds and you can see the CV score that's cross validation score and then we've got another algorithm for our random forest and you can see the DF test file again. I wanted to show the DF test file. And so this is your output. And this tells you your output. And basically what you do is you use your algorithm to test the test file. And the algorithm that's used to test the test file is um, used to set up your submission file and the submission file gives you your loan ID and your loan status. And I submitted that to Analytics Vidhaya website and I got a 76% accuracy, which I was quite pleased about. Um, I suppose if I knew more, if, if I knew more, I could fine tune it and possibly get a little bit higher accuracy. But considering the fact that I'm new and I'm just learning, I thought it was a pretty good uh, score. And that's why I wanted to do um, a code review to go over this code with you. So I hope I've gone through the code slow enough to where if you wanted to um, follow along with me in the code and probably copy the code, then it was easy for you to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and conclude this code review. If you like my code review, please like, subscribe, and share. And if you um, like the work I do, I've got my PayPal account down below where you can leave a donation that will be very greatly appreciated to help me defray my many expenses just to stay alive in Reading, a very expensive town. I mean, my council tax alone is close to £100 a month. And um, Thank you very much for watching this video and I will see you the next time.